At first it was a true meaning of leaving this world. Goodbye notes to family members and friends and people in my life. But as time went on, more and more notes developed and it just kept on creating and until I got this idea of if I like this so much, why don't I form this into a work and try to find a reason to live. I remember the life I used to live with no worries, fear, or sadness. The way I could walk through the school doors without the immediate urge to throw up. The way that I could ride a bus without having a panic attack. The way I could sit in the classroom without having to distract myself away from my anxiety. The way I could enjoy life without the constant urge to disappear. I remember the old me. I'm Justin Maxwell Kemp. I'm an author, and this is Woodford. It's my dog, and we're in my room. Yeah. He is empathetic. He is personable. He's a pretty inquisitive young man. He's, I think, shy in some ways. In other ways, he's very extroverted. He's smart. He is kind. He cares deeply about people. That's one thing that has been the case for years, from the time that he was just a small child. He has wisdom. He's like, like I always say, today are you 40, 60, or 90? So at this point, my parents got a divorce. Um, I was dealing with a lot of friendship situations, um, meaning I didn't have very many <laughs> or any at all. And on top of that, um, I would go to events and I would be the victim of things that people would say to me um, during those times. So that's bullying. Yes. Yeah, a lot of criticism, just so much criticism for no reason. As that went on, I, uh, I went deeper into a depression. Um, I would come home and I would sleep all day long, or um, I was very angry. I was struggling alone. I didn't tell anyone. No one knew anything about what I was going through, but I was struggling so, so deeply that I didn't want to get help. I just wanted to die. It was a scary point in time, you know, not knowing if you would ever make it out of that hole. Unfortunately, he really hid a lot of this from us for a while, but we could tell there was a noticeable difference, a change in his behavior. And when there was a lot of sleeping in a room, in the dark, didn't want to come out, didn't want to eat, this is not just hormonal. This is not just a teenager or preteen needing sleep. This is something else. The reality was that Justin was not Justin. And that was the part that you just can't deny there's something here. Uh, and let's figure out how we can make Justin better, how we can support him, how we can make him whole. There's a question that I'm asked every time that I go to therapy. What makes you happy? When I first heard this question, I thought it was a simple and easy answer. But it's not when you really think about it. There are little moments that make me smile, but it's not happiness. For me, it is so much easier to put on a smile than to explain to everyone why I'm always gloomy. Everyone believes me to be this awesome person who is always excited and smiling, but that is not the true me. The true me is slowly dying on the inside, and always sad. The true me hides behind a smile, because it is what I believe to be the only thing that I can do. So this is the passage that is my favorite throughout the whole book. Um, talks about anxiety and my experience, my personal experience with anxiety. Um, I think when we talk about anxiety, we don't talk about the whole 
feeling and emotion that goes into it because um, it's it's embarrassing honestly <laughs> um, for me anxiety made me have to use the bathroom <laughs> and I didn't want to talk about that at all but I would um, before every class I would always have to go to the bathroom and it was so draining because at the end of the day I would have to come home and just lay in bed and sleep because I'd be hyperactive all day um, focusing on how I was going to get through the next class. So that's, that's what went into this passage. The way the stomach clenches and the shoulders tense up. You try to make yourself smaller with the hope that the immense mental pressure will end. The sweat on your palms begins to mark your pants as you wipe them off. Your whole body pushes itself to the point where you feel like you are being crushed. You try to move, but you're stuck until the feeling slows down enough for you to run out of the room you are in and into the bathroom. You run down the hall, feeling the whole world is watching. And when you get inside, all you want is to be alone. When I was writing the book, I was at a very low moment in my life and just putting words to a paper, um, feelings to a paper, I, I'd say, it, um, it opened my, my, not only my, my mind up, but my heart up. One of my favorite things about the book is that the characters' names are a memorial. There's Rosalie, Nigel, Isabel, and Kenneth. These people were kids my age, real kids, who suffered and they died by suicide because of bullying and, and mental problems. And at the time, it, it connected with me. They were my characters that brought a sense of understanding towards what I was going through. Their stories and my story, they aligned. And unfortunately, they couldn't make it out of what they were going through, but it gave me a sense of now that I understand what they went through, maybe I can make a difference and change my narrative. I'm not really in the psychology field. I don't. I, I didn't study it. I don't. I don't know it. So, all I know is from my own experiences, and what I know is that when I was at my lowest point, I felt alone. So that's why I wrote this. I want people to know that they're not alone. That's my whole ideal. So. He really has touched people and really has made people open up. When I first started sharing my story, a lot of people would come up to me and say, you're doing amazing work. Hearing stories of kids my age who have struggled, who are struggling, um, it's just powerful and it makes me want to want to do more, write more, talk more, present more, and just bring awareness to this cause. There are, there are kids out there that don't do that, that don't feel that they're comfortable enough sharing what they're feeling with their parents and friends and family. So that, that's why I continue to do what I do. What I've learned, what Justin has taught me, is you know that's dangerous more than anything else. If we don't really have these conversations, that's more dangerous than the alternative. Uh, and so we really have to lean in, be courageous, and then once you do, it's kind of like jumping into a cold pool. Once you're in there, it's not so cold anymore. This book saved me in a way. I think once I had gotten through my moments of severe anxiety and suicidal ideation, I had started taking medication um, right there. <laughs> and things did get better. I was actually really surprised how crazy that worked because I was like, this is a mindset. How are pills going to change this? And it did, it did. I'm proud to say that my anxiety is at a point where it's not limiting what I do anymore. I'm proud of the book, I am. But I also know there's a lot more work to do before I can be completely proud. So I'm proud of progress. What I've seen with him has been tremendous growth. It's still a journey. I think that he's in a really good place now, but just like life, you know, there's ups and downs, there's ups and downs, but the downs are not as low as they were. And I think he actually sees light now instead of darkness. And that's huge. 
a lot of times I'm relying on myself to make myself happy, you know? And then I think about what is happy? <laughs> I'm like, what does it actually mean to be happy? So instead of asking ourselves, are you happy? I think we should be asking ourselves, are we doing what we need to do? Something along the lines of progress, not the finish line. Happiness is a finish line. But progress is, it's moving us, you know, towards that goal. Life's a journey. <laughs> and I think that idea of progress, that's, that's what people should be striving for. Am I making myself better every day? Instead of, am I at that final goal? Because you don't want to be at that final goal. The fun part is the journey. <laughs>